All right, go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Brown, where we left off, I was asking you about this period of time when Mr. Jones started to have some failure of recollection on the issue of head licking. When did that, do you recall when that began or when that started? It's been about a month or so now. Before that time, how many times had you been involved in a conversation where Mr. Jones talked about the head licking incident? Objection. Relevance. Overruled. I can't tell you exact number of times, but it was more than a couple. Okay. And how would you describe this change in his recollection, if you can? Objection. Vague. I can be more specific. Relevance. My question goes to, was it an abrupt change, or was it something that occurred over a period of time, or something in between? Objection. Vague. Relevance. Foundation. Overruled. You may answer. I would say it was more abrupt than anything else. Thank you, Mr. Brown. I have no further questions. Cross-examine? Yes, please, Your Honor. Good morning, Mr. Brown. Good morning. How long have you known Bob Jones? The year Princess Diana died. I think it was, 97. Okay. And approximately when did he tell you he intended to write a book? It was about January, a few months before he was terminated. And you've been interviewed by the sheriffs in this case, right? That's correct. And you told the sheriffs that Bob Jones told you he's broke and he needs to make some money, right? That's what? Objection. Hearsay. Sustained. Have you gone through different drafts with Mr. Jones? Yes, I have. On the issue of head licking, did Mr. Jones tell you at one point he had to make money on this book because he had financial problems? Objection. Hearsay. Argumentative. Overruled. You may answer. He didn't, Mr. Mesero. He didn't tell me that in relation to the head licking. That never came up in discussions of money. But he told you he's broke and has to get paid for this book, correct? Objection. Hearsay. Argumentative. Overruled. You may answer. When we first started the book, he said he needs the money. He was just fired. And he said he was broke, right? Yes, that's correct. You told the police you said he was broke, right? That's correct. Okay, now, how did, how did the, let me rephrase that. Obviously at some point you met with Bob Jones about writing a book, correct? That's correct. And where did you meet with him? Well, as I said earlier, he first approached me here at the court, back during the arraignment. And did he tell you then he wanted to write something? That's correct. And that's before he? That's before his termination. Okay. And how long before his termination was that, do you think? Well, it was January, so, the termination was in June. So four, five months. And did he tell you he was doing it secretly? Well, he didn't say secretly, but he said, obviously any process with a book, you don't want everyone to know this is what you are doing. I did, however, myself, tell members of the family, to get their thoughts on it, because that was my concern, what their thoughts may be with me doing a book with Bob Jones with, chiefly it had to be about Michael Jackson. Okay, now, did Mr. Jones tell you he was talking to anyone from the sheriff's department? Not at that time, no. When did you first learn that he had spoken to anyone from the sheriff's department? I believe they first contacted him in December of last year. And based on the prosecutor's questions to you, you must have learned at some point that Bob Jones was saying he couldn't really remember seeing any head licking, right? Objection. Hearsay. I'm sorry. I can't read the learned instead of render. All right. The objection is overruled. You may answer. Could you repeat it, sir? I'll have it read back. May it be read back, your honor? Yes. Record read. Oh, I wouldn't say it was based on the prosecutors, that. I think it was simply when I spoke with him, he got a little nervous about that particular vein. I think he realized that it was going to become a part of this. Well, did you and Mr. Jones discuss the fact that the Arvizos went to Larry Feldman, the same lawyer who represented the Chandlers? The Objection. Relevance. Beyond the scope, and argumentative. Sustained. 
Has the name Larry Feldman come up in the book you're writing? Same objection. Overruled. You may answer. Not by name, but certainly by title and by inference. Bob did say, based on his notes back in. Well, just, you just have to answer the question, okay? I'll get into that. Okay. Okay, does the book concern this case in any respect? I would think in some respects. And is it your plan to market the book while this trial is going on? Well, it all depends on when it's finished. Has he ever talked to you about when he plans to complete the book? Well, I have a lot of say in that, so we've talked about that, and we've always said we don't want it to be a rush job, and a lot of people want it to be a rush job. The publisher wants it to be a rush job. The publisher wants it to be a rough job. Rush job. Rush job because you can sell it better while the trial is going on, right? Obviously, if it comes out now, it would probably pique some interest because it's Bob Jones, who, you know, has worked for Michael for so long, and it's Michael. Now, have you discussed the amount of money he might make on the book? No, you know, we, we've been made promises in the past. We don't listen to that. We don't even speculate on what can be made. Personally, I just enjoy writing, so, you know, the money aspect, I think I do pretty well. It's not a big deal to me. Do you remember you were interviewed by a Santa Barbara sheriff on December 7, 2004? Around about, yeah. And you were approached by Sergeant Robel, right? Uh-huh, yes, that's correct, I'm sorry. And the purpose of the interview was to talk to you about this alleged head-licking event, right? I'm not sure if that was the purpose of the interview. We talked about various things back in December, but I'm not sure that was the purpose of it. And do you remember Sergeant Robel wanted to know why you had said that Mr. Jones told you he saw Michael Jackson kiss Jordy, not lick his head? D well, that's not exactly what, that I remember Sergeant Robel putting to me. There was a question another investigator had had about whether I said he, Bob said he licked or kissed him, and he wanted me to clarify that. And you had told the investigator that based on your discussions with Bob Jones, he had said that Michael Jackson kissed Jordy one time, didn't lick his head, right? No, I didn't say that. Do you remember you apologized? No, no. What happened? I apologized if it was confused. But what happened was, I think the investigator had misunderstood and that's what he was calling to clarify. That's one of the reasons why he called, to clarify exactly what I said. He said he didn't remember if I said, licking, or, kissing. Let me ask you if this is correct. Sure. Brown apologized for the mistake. Said he had not realized that he told me he was kissing as opposed to licking. Does that sound accurate to you? It's probably accurate. But again, as I'm explaining to you, I explained to Sergeant Robel when he asked the question, when he asked me about that, I had told the other investigator, I think it was zealous, I'm, I'm not sure but I think it was Paul Zealous, the investigator's name, and I think he was the one who had actually made the mistake or, I won't even say, mistake. He wanted to clarify, is that what I said? Why did you apologize to him? Well, I apologized for being polite. I mean, it's just a polite thing to do, you know. If I was wrong, I have no problems apologizing. Now, you're aware that Mr. Jones has indicated he doesn't remember head licking and has said he'd be lying to say that he did. Are you aware of that? Objection. Misstates the evidence. Sustained. You're in the process of writing the section of the book that deals with this trip to Monaco, aren't you? No, no, we're long since past that. Well, Mr. Jones has indicated that he has not approved. Everything that has. Objection. Argumentative. Hearsay as to what Mr. Jones said, and misstates the evidence. It's an incomplete question, too. Mr. Jones has final approval over what's in that book, doesn't he? Absolutely. Would you agree that the more sensational the book, the better the chance of making money on it? Well, obviously. I mean, we've been told things that nothing surprises them about Michael Jackson, so, but it's not our intentions to write a book of scandal, if that's what you're inferring. It's certainly not mine, and I have to write it. And I have people in his family who I happen to love very much who I'm not going to disappoint. They're not getting any money from the book, are they? The family? Yes. Why should they? They're not getting any money from the book, are they? I'm sorry to respond in that way. No. 
The one who is going to make money is Bob Jones, who's broke, right? We both will. You're aware that Bob Jones was very upset when he was terminated, aren't you? You know what? To be honest with you, he wasn't upset that he was terminated. He was upset in which the way Randy terminated him. I'm not sure what that means. Well, Bob had. Referring to Randy Jackson, right? Randy Jackson, I'm sorry. Bob had felt he'd been loyal to Michael for basically half of Michael's life, or most of Michael's life, I should say. And to get fired by a messenger, you know, I felt bad, too. In fact, I had spoke to someone in Michael's family about that. I said, that's horrible. But he was just upset in the method. He knew that eventually his time was going to be up just like everyone else's. In the draft that you and Mr. Jones have written. Mr. Jones says on at least two occasions that he's never seen Michael Jackson act inappropriately with children, right? Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. You may answer. Well, if it was the exact, well, I don't remember the exact wording, but to say that he saw him molest anybody, no, it does not say he saw him molest anybody. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Mr. Jones, sick. I previously showed you People's Exhibit 803. Did Mr. Jones approve those two passages? Yes. Ask to move 803 into evidence. Objection. Hearsay. Foundation. Sustained. Relevance. Offered as a prior inconsistent statement as to the first passage and a prior consistent statement as to the second. Same objection. The ruling remains the same. All right. Ask at this time to admit the two emails, Your Honor, Exhibits 804 and 805, into evidence at this time. Objection. Hearsay. Foundation. Authenticity. Relevance. I'll take that up later. Okay. Mr. Brown, you said that Mr. Jones was complaining about his finances on cross-examination. Uh-huh. Yes. Is this a frequent complaint? Yeah. He's, well, yeah. He's made a few complaints about that. Was there a time when he stopped complaining about his finances during this period of collaboration? Yes. Was what, when, when he stopped complaining about finances, tell me, was there any relationship in time to that point and the time in which he started to have this failure of recollection? Objection. Relevance. Vague. Foundation. All sustained vague. Can you tell me approximately when in time Mr. Jones stopped complaining about his finances? It's been about a month or so. And when in time did he start to have his failure of recollection? About a month or so. Did they, did both of those coincide in time? I would say so, yes. Thank you. I have no further questions. Mr. Brown, what I think the prosecutor just elicited is the following. When he was broke, he said there was licking. And when he didn't have financial problems, he said there wasn't any, right? Well, if that's how you... Right? Break it down, yeah, I guess. Thank you. No further questions. Thank you. You may step down. Would you give me exhibits 804 and 805? Call your next witness. June Chandler, your honor. She's on her way, your honor. 804 and 805 are not admitted. Come forward, please. When you get to the witness stand here, remain standing. Face the clerk here and raise your right hand. I do. Please be seated. State and spell your name for the record. June Chandler. J-U-N-E. C-H-A-N-D-L-E-R. Thank you. You're welcome. Good morning, Mrs. Chandler. Good morning. I want to go back in time a little bit to around 1992 and 93, okay? Yes. And are you related in some fashion to Jordan Chandler? Yes. He is my son. Okay. And we're going, you know. I should have done this before we started. Yes. You have to lean right into that microphone so everybody can hear what you have to say. We've had the same problem with everybody, so it's not just you. Okay. You have a very soft voice, so you keep it up, all right? Okay.
I will. Let me start all over again and ask you again. Are you related to Jordan Chandler? Yes, I am. He is my son. Do you have any other sons or daughters? Yes, I have a daughter. And her name? Lily Chandler. And how old is Lily right now? 17 years old. Now, in 1992 and 1993, were you married? Yes, I was. And to whom were you married? To David Schwartz. And is David Schwartz the father of either of your children? Yes. Which one? Lily Chandler. And prior to your marriage with David Schwartz, you were married to Evan Chandler, correct? Correct. And Evan Chandler is the father of Jordan Chandler? Correct. What is Jordan's date of birth? January 11, 1980. And to your knowledge, had, by the time of the events in 1992 and 93, had Evan Chandler remarried? Yes. And do you know his wife or did you know his wife at that time? Yes, I did. And her name is? Natalie Chandler. And did they have any other children? Yes, they did. And the child's name? Nikki Chandler. And Emmanuel Chandler. And at the time of 1992 and 1993, can you give us the approximate ages of those children? As best as I can recall, seven and four. And who is the oldest? Nikki Chandler, the son. Okay. Now, I want to show you some photographs. The first photograph we have that's marked is 793, the next one is 794, and the next one is 795, okay? The first one, 793, I'll ask you if you recognize the person depicted in that photograph? No, I do not. Have you ever seen that person before? Not that I recall. And I want to show you a photograph marked as 794, or Exhibit 794. Do you recognize the people depicted in that photograph? Not that I recall. Neither the top nor the bottom? He might look familiar. Okay. And the bottom photograph? I don't recall. And with regard to Exhibit number 795, do you recognize any of the people depicted in that photograph? I recall this boy and Michael Jackson. All right. This boy, meaning the person on the far left-hand side of the exhibit 795? Correct. And do you recall the boy's name? Brett Barnes. Do you recall where you saw Mr. Barnes, or the child Barnes? At Neverland. Okay. So with regard to the photographs 793, 794 and 795, none of those photographs are pictures of your son, correct? No. No. I want to show you 776. Ask you if you recognize that photograph? Yes, I do. And who is that? That's my son. Your son? Jordan. All right. Thank you. Your Honor, with the court's permission, I'd like to publish these just so the jury knows what the witness has testified to. Yes. And we're going to do it on the Elmo, Your Honor. So if we could have that. All right, Gordon? All right. The photograph that's on the board that's 793 is an exhibit of the child with the long black hair. And that is not your son, Jordan Chandler? No, it's not. All right. And the next exhibit would be 794. And specifically I'm going to direct your attention to the child sitting on the floor with the arrow drawn up to him. Do you recognize that child? Barely. Who do you think that? When you say, barely, who do you recognize? I would say it's probably a younger photo of the boy above. And do you recognize who the boy above in that photograph is? I think that's Brett Barnes. Okay. And the last photo is 795. And you indicated the child on the far left-hand side of the photograph. Is that correct? Correct. The child with the hat next to Mr. Jackson? Correct. That's Brett Barnes. That's Brett Barnes. All right. Thank you. And lastly, the photograph marked as 776, you've identified that as your child, Jordan, correct? My son Jordan. Your son Jordan? Yes. All right, thank you. We can have the lights again, your honor. Now, Mrs. Chandler, do you recognize the defendant in this case, Michael Jackson? I do. 
And have you been in Mr. Jackson's presence before? Yes. Now, your son Jordan, did you have, let me go back in time. Did you have an occasion where you actually met Michael Jackson? Yes, I had an occasion. For the first time? Yes. Would you tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury, where did that occur? That occurred at my ex-husband's employment, rent a rec. And where is that located? In West LA. And was, do you remember about approximately when that occurred? It was in the summer of, 92. Late summer. And were you actually at the, your husband's place of business when Mr. Jackson showed up? After he showed up, yes. Okay. You received a telephone call from someone? Yes, from my ex-husband. And by the way, your ex-husband's name is what? David Schwartz. Did you ever take Mr. Schwartz's last name? No, I did not. So you've always been June Chandler? I've always been June Chandler. So you received a telephone call and then you went down to his place of business? Yes, I did. With regard to your son Jordan, did Jordan go with you? Yes, he did. Was Mr. Jackson there? Yes, he was. And do you recall how long you were with Mr. Jackson and Jordan that day? Briefly. Five minutes. Ten minutes. And did, was there any information exchange between you and Mr. Jackson that day? Yes. And what was that? I said, if you would like to see Jordy or if he could call you or if you'd like to speak to him, here is our number, and you can give him a call. And you gave that to Mr. Jackson? Yes, I did. Now, let me go back in time. Before this meeting that you had at your husband's place of business in 1992, had Jordan ever expressed, to your knowledge, some admiration for Mr. Jackson? Oh, very much so, yes. How did he display that admiration? Objection. Hearsay. I didn't ask for a statement, your honor. I asked for a display. All right. He's not asking for anything that was said. Do you understand the question? Would you repeat the question, please? Yes. How did your son Jordan, prior to this meeting that occurred at David Schwartz's place of business, express, display his admiration for Mr. Jackson? He had a little sparkly jacket that he would wear to parties. He would have a glove like Michael Jackson, and dance around like Michael Jackson. And this was all before he met Mr. Jackson? Before he met Michael Jackson, yes. Now, after the incident occurred where there was an exchange where you gave Mr. Jackson your telephone number, and let me go back and ask you a question about that. Was the telephone number you gave him your home number? Yes, it was. Did, to your knowledge, did Mr. Jackson ever call your son Jordan? Yes, he did. And do you recall, for the ladies and gentlemen of the jury, approximately what the time span was from the incident that occurred at your ex-husband's place of business to the time that Mr. Jackson actually called your son? To the best of my recollection, it could have been a month or two after our first meeting with Michael Jackson at rent a -Rec. Were you actually in the room when Mr. Jackson called? I don't recall being in the room, but I might have been. Do you recall at some time visiting Neverland Ranch? Yes, I do. Do you recall approximately when that occurred? I recall around February. Of? 1993. 1993? Yes. So what I want to ask you is, between the time that Mr. Jackson started calling your son to the time that you went to Neverland Ranch, can you give the jury some idea of the number of times Mr. Jackson called your son Jordan? To the best of my recollection. Objection. Foundation. Sustained. Were you present in the house when these conversations occurred? Yes, I was. Did you sometimes answer the phone? Yes. And Mr. Jackson was on the line? Yes, he was. And were you also present in the house during the time to observe the length of the conversations between your son and Mr. Jackson? Yes, I was. On more than one occasion? Absolutely. All right. So based upon your observations and the things that you saw and the things that you heard, give us an estimate of the number of times that you know of that Mr. Jackson called your son Jordan. I would say eight to ten times. And with regard to those conversations in which you have personal knowledge of the length of time, 
Could you give the jury some idea of how long these conversations lasted? It was from maybe 10 minutes, to an hour, or an hour and a half. It progressed. It got longer and longer. Could you describe to the jury what your son's reaction was to these phone calls? He was excited to hear from him. They were talking about things that interested Jordy, so, um. In those occasions where you picked up the phone and you talked to Mr. Jackson, did he tell you where he was? No, he didn't tell me. No. Now, how is it that you and Jordan ended up going to Neverland Valley Ranch for the first time? We were invited to go to Neverland, because during those conversations, Michael Jackson said, Would you like to come to visit? When I am finished touring, he was doing a European tour, I think, he said we can come and visit. And my son was very excited to be able to go up there and see Neverland. Now, the first time you went to Neverland, you told the jury it was sometime in February of 1993. How did you get there? I drove. And who went with you besides Jordan, if anyone? My daughter Lily. And at this point in time, how old was Lily? Was seven, I think. Seven or eight. And Jordan was born in 1980, so he was 13 years old at the time you made the first visit, correct? Twelve, thirteen, yes. Yes. And do you recall whether it was during the week or on a weekend that you visited? On a weekend. During the time that you were, during this first visit, do you recall how many days you were there? Oh, two nights. Okay. So two nights and at least two days and possibly a third day? Two nights. There was not a third day. And where did you stay while you were at the ranch? Guest cottage. Where did you personally stay? The guest cottages at Neverland. And was there somebody in your cottage with you? Yes, my daughter and my son. So Jordan stayed with you and Lily in the same cottage? Yes. And was this during the entire length of this first visit? Yes. And while you were at the ranch during the first visit, did you see Mr. Jackson? Yes, we did. And did you spend time with Mr. Jackson? Yes, I did. Did you spend a lot of time with Mr. Jackson? Yes. And when you say, yes, I did, can you tell us about what Jordan and Lily did? We were all either taking rides on the Ferris wheel, playing video games. Jordy and Michael were playing video games. I was watching. Lily was playing. We looked at his animals that he had. Just different things that were at Neverland. Okay. And I think you've described that as being an amazing weekend? Yes. Fun. Now, during the time that you were there on this first visit, do you recall whether or not you went with Mr. Jackson to a business called Toys R Us? Yes. And could you tell us about that? I guess it was after hours, after Toys R Us closed, and Michael said, Jordy and Lily, you get to go shopping and buy toys, get toys. So we went and... When you say, we went, who's we? Lily and Jordy and Michael and I went. And they had fun. They were shopping and Michael bought lots of things for them. They picked out stuff, and they were showered with great presents from Toys R Us. And Mr. Jackson paid for all of that? I... Yes, he did. You didn't, right? No. Now, after you left Neverland Valley Ranch after this first visit, did you ever go back to Neverland Valley Ranch? Yes. And do you recall how much time elapsed between the first time you went there and the second time you went back? It could be a week later or two weeks after. And when you went back the second time, do you recall how you got there? I, to the best of my recollection, I was picked up by Michael Jackson. When you say, picked up by Michael Jackson, in what form of transportation was that? In his car, limo. And who else was with you when you got picked up? I mean, from your family. Let's start that way first. It was Lily, my daughter, and Jordan. So the three of you? My son. The three of you went back to the ranch? Right. Was there anybody else in the limo that you recall with Mr. Jackson? Well. Let me go back and make something clear. Sure. Was Mr. Jackson actually in the limo himself? Yes, he was. Now, let's ask the question. Okay. 
Was there anybody else in the limo other than Mr. Jackson and the three of you? Yes, there was Brett Barnes. And do you recall where Mr. Where the child Brett? Let me ask you this. With regard to Brett Barnes, can you estimate about approximately what age you felt Brett Barnes was at this point? 11. 10. 11. So he was a child? He was a child. And where was Brett Barnes in the car in relationship to Mr. Jackson? Sitting next to Michael Jackson. Now, on the second visit you went to the ranch, do you recall how long you stayed? A weekend. And did you spend time, did you personally spend time with Mr. Jackson that weekend? Yes, I did. Did Jordan spend time with him that weekend? Yes, he did. And did you see Brett Barnes around there that weekend? Yes, I don't really remember, but yes, he was there, too. Yes, he was enjoying that time also. And where did you personally sleep during your stay, the second visit to Neverland Valley Ranch? Guest cottages. Where did Lily stay? In the guest cottages. And where did your son Jordan stay? In the guest cottages. Now, the guest cottages are all located in one general area, correct? Yes. They're all sort of connected into one building? Correct. With regard to that building, did you ever see Brett Barnes anywhere around the building and the cottages? Not that I recall. Now, how did you get home from Neverland on this second visit? We were driven home. In a limo? Yes. Was Mr. Jackson present? I don't recall. Was there ever an occasion where you went to Disneyland? Yes. And do you recall when that happened in relationship to like either one of these first, second visits? That could have been that weekend, the second weekend that we were at Neverland that we went. Instead of going to Los Angeles, we went to Anaheim, to Disneyland. It could have been that weekend. And who all went to Disneyland? I remember Jordan, Lily, Michael and I, and perhaps Brett. Now, did you ever have an occasion to visit Neverland Valley Ranch again? Yes. And do you remember approximately how much time elapsed between the second visit and the third visit? It could have been a week. A weekend. And when you went to the ranch on this third occasion, was Mr. Jackson present? Yes, he was. And where did you sleep? In the guest cottages. And where did Lily sleep? In the guest cottages. And where did Jordan sleep? In the guest cottages. At some point in time during any one of these three visits to these three visits you've described to the jury, did your son request to sleep in Mr. Jackson's bedroom? Yes. Objection. Leading. He did. Overruled. Next question. And do you recall during which one of the visits it was that the request came? Oh, the third visit. And did you allow him to do that? No, I did not. Did you notice? I may not have asked this with regard to the third visit, but you indicated in at least the first visit that Jordan slept with you in your guest cottage, correct? Correct. In the second visit, did Jordan sleep with you in your guest cottage? Yes, he did. And the third visit, did Jordan sleep with you in your guest cottage? Yes, he did. Did you notice anything with regard to what time of the day or night it was that Jordan finally came to your cottage to go to bed? I assume it was late, after 11 o'clock. Why do you assume that? Because they were playing all day and all night. And it was a weekend. He did not have school, so he was allowed to stay up later than 11 o'clock. During any of your visits to Neverland Valley Ranch, did you ever meet any children from New Jersey? Yes. Do you remember their names? Frankie and Eddie. And with regard to Frankie at this point in time, do you recall approximately how old Frankie was? Around the same age as Jordan, or maybe younger. And how about Eddie? I don't recall. I don't know which one is which. Do you recall their last name at all? Cassio. And do you remember which one of the visits to the ranch was it that you met Frank Cassio? No, I don't. Was there, was there some point in time when you took a trip with Mr. Jackson to Las Vegas? Yes, there was. And do you remember when that trip occurred? 
just approximately what month, for instance? The end of March. Of 1993? Of 93. Correct. Excuse me, my allergies are acting up today. How did you get to Las Vegas? By jet, private jet. And who was with you on the jet? My son Jordan, Lily, myself and Michael. And when you got to Las Vegas, where did you stay? What hotel? The Mirage Hotel. And when you got to the Mirage Hotel, do you remember what time of day or night it was? No. Do you remember how long you stayed in Las Vegas on this occasion? Two or three nights. Now, when you got to Las Vegas, did you have, obviously you had a room? Correct. In the Mirage. And who was in your room when you first got there? Who was staying in your room? Jordan, myself, Lily and Michael. All in the same room? Correct. Now, did those arrangements change at any point in time? Yes. And when did they change? The second night things changed. With regard to, things changed, could you tell me what changed first? Well, there were approximately three bedrooms in that suite at the Mirage Hotel. Lily and I were staying in one bedroom, Jordy had another bedroom, and Michael had another bedroom. The second night, they were going to see a performance, Cirque du Soleil performance. They, meaning who? Jordy and Michael. Okay. And Lily and I it was around 11 p.m. at night, and I got a call from somebody at Cirque du Soleil saying, where is Michael? And I said, he should be there with my son. They said, he's not here. A little while later, another call. He still didn't show up. They still did not show up. And I. There's a knock on the door and it's Michael and Jordan, and they came back into the suite. Michael. Now, let me stop you right there, okay? Yes. About what time is it when your son Jordan and the defendant in this case, Mr. Jackson, showed up? Well, I think the performance started at 11 o'clock, and I would say Jordan and Michael showed up around 11.30. Now, could you describe for the jury Mr. Jackson's demeanor at the time that they came back to the room? He was sobbing. He was crying, shaking, trembling. Michael Jackson was? He was. And what about your son's demeanor? He was quiet. Now, at that point in time, did Mr. Jackson tell you why he was upset or crying? Yes. All right. Tell the jury what he said. He said, you don't trust me? We're a family. Why are you doing this? Why are you not allowing Jordy to be with me? And I said, he is with you. He said, but my bedroom. Why not in my bedroom? We fall asleep. The kids have fun. Boys. Objection. Non-responsive. Narrative. Narrative. Sustained. All right. Tell us what. Mr. Jackson said that he wanted your son to sleep with him in his bed. What you said to Mr. Jackson. What I said to Michael was, this is not, this is not anything that I want. This is not right. Jordy should be able to do what he wants to do. He should be able to fall asleep where he wants to sleep. Is this you talking or Mr. Jackson speaking? I was saying this. And Michael was trembling and saying, we're a family. Jordy is having fun. Why can't he sleep in my bed? There's nothing wrong. There's nothing going on. Don't you trust me? All right. How long do you think this conversation lasted between you and Mr. Jackson over where Jordan was going to sleep that night? I would say 20 to 30, 40 minutes. So it was a back and forth conversation, is that right? Yes. Do you recall how many times during that conversation that Mr. Jackson emphasized the fact that you didn't trust him? Objection. Leading. No, I don't recall how many times. Just a moment. I'm sorry. Overruled. Go ahead. You may answer. Go ahead. I don't recall how many times. Was it on more than one occasion? Absolutely, yes. Was it on many occasions? Quite a few. Do you remember how many times during the conversation that Mr. Jackson emphasized to you that you were family? Many times. Did you at some point in time relent and allow your son to sleep with Michael Jackson in his bedroom? Yes, I did. And was it after that discussion on that night? Yes. Is that the first occasion? Correct. 
When you were in Las Vegas, do you remember how many of the nights in Las Vegas that your son Jordan slept with the defendant, Michael Jackson, in Michael Jackson's room? I would say two occasions. Now, at some point in time after you had agreed to let your son Jordan sleep with Mr. Jackson, were you the recipient of a gift from Mr. Jackson? Yes, I was. Would you describe that to the jury? It was a gold bracelet, and it was given to me by Michael. And you say, a gold bracelet. Had you seen that gold bracelet in a shop of some kind before? I had seen it before, yes. And the brand name on that bracelet? Cartier. Was it expensive, to your knowledge? Oh, I, yes, it was. When was it you received this gift in relationship to having agreed to allow your son to sleep in bed with Mr. Jackson? I think it was the next evening when we were attending a show, a magic show, by David Copperfield. Mrs. Chandler, do you recall after Las Vegas where you went, where you personally and Jordan went? When you came back from Vegas, where did you go, do you recall? After Vegas, I, it could be back to Disneyland, back to Neverland, or home. I'm not exactly certain. Was Mr. Jackson with you wherever it was that you went? Did he go back with you, in other words? Yes, he did. And did Mr. Jackson continue to spend his nights with your son in the same room, in the same bed, from Las Vegas, from that point on? Yes. Were there other visits to Neverland Valley Ranch after you came back from Las Vegas? Yes, there were. And were there occasions when your son went up to the ranch where you and Lily did not accompany him to the ranch? Yes. Do you remember on how many such occasions? I would say two or three times. And were there occasions also where you and Lily and Jordan also went up to the ranch after Las Vegas? Yes. And on those occasions when you went up to the ranch after Las Vegas, where did you stay? I stayed in the guest cottages. And where did Lily stay? In the guest cottages. And where did Jordan stay? In Michael Jackson's bedroom. Were there ever any occasions that you recall where you actually, when you got to the ranch, that you would take Jordan's suitcase in and take it into Mr. Jackson's bedroom and leave it there? Possibly. So you knew that he was going to be spending the night with Michael Jackson in Michael Jackson's bedroom at this point in time? Yes. Now, were there occasions after you got back from Las Vegas? Let me. Where Mr. Jackson actually was invited to stay at your residence where you lived at this point in time? Yes. Now, what city was it that you lived in at this time? Santa Monica. We're talking about 1993, in the spring, right? Correct. Okay. Where did you live? Santa Monica. And at this point in time, was Mr. Schwartz living with you? No, he wasn't. So in the household was there anybody besides you and Jordan and Lily? My housekeeper. And was that a full-time housekeeper? Yes, she was. 24 hours a day? Yes. Did she live in the house? Yes, she did. She was a live-in. That's what I meant. Sorry. Clumsy question. And during this time, did Mr. Jackson ever spend the night at your residence? Yes, he did. And do you recall on how many occasions Mr. Jackson spent the night at your residence? I would say more than 30 times. And were some of those occasions on consecutive days or nights? Yes. And how long consecutively do you think that that occurred? Oh, it could be a week or two at a time. Where did Mr. Jackson stay in the house? In Jordan's bedroom. Are there more than one bed in that room? No. I am assuming that Jordan was going to school during this period of time. He was. So Mr. Jackson would spend the night there. What would happen when Jordan would go to school? To your knowledge, what did Mr. Jackson do? Michael would leave. And approximately what time would he return? After Jordan came home from school. And so was this the routine that was followed during the time that Mr. Jackson was staying at your residence? Yes. Did you ever, have you ever been to Disney World? Yes. In Orlando, Florida? Yes. And have you been to Disney World with the defendant in this case, Michael Jackson? Yes. And do you remember approximately when it was that you went to Disney World with Mr. Jackson? 
I would say in May. Of 93? Of 93. And when you went to Disney World with Mr. Jackson, who else went with you? Jordan and Lily. Do you recall where you stayed? I recall the Grand Floridian was one hotel. And during the time that, do you remember how many days, did you go there on more than one occasion? Yes, we did. How many occasions? Twice. And do you recall what the sleeping arrangements were on the first occasion? Jordy was with Michael and Lily was with me. And when you say, with Michael? In Michael's bedroom. Now, during the time that you visited Disney World in Orlando, would you describe the nature of the relationship that was going on, that you observed personally, between the defendant in this case, Michael Jackson, and your son Jordan? The behavior, you say? Yeah. The behavior with my son was he was not wanting to be with Lily and I anymore, and he was just with Michael the whole time, and he wasn't too happy. Just, well, I couldn't, I didn't have any communication with him really. Was this something that you observed for the first time in Orlando or was this something that you began to observe over a period of time? It was a period of time, and it gradually happened. Did you notice any change in your son? Yes. Jordan? Yes. What was the nature of the change? Well, he started dressing like Michael. He started acting withdrawn, sort of smart alecky. Not as sweet as he normally was. And withdrawn. He just didn't want to be with us, Lily and I. Had you always been close prior to that? Extremely close. Do you? I think you answered this, but just in case, how many days did you think you were in Florida? Oh, I don't really remember, but it's probably more than two nights. Two, three nights. And after you came back from Florida, do you recall where you went? After that, I think the next trip was to Monaco. In between the time that you went to Florida and to Monaco, do you recall where you were, where you were personally staying? No, I guess home. Do you remember how much time elapsed between the two trips? Not really, no. Was it more than a month, more than a week? Obviously it was more than a day or so. Yes, it was a couple, it could be three weeks. And during that time when you got back from Florida till the time that you left for Monaco, were you with Mr. Jackson? At times. And the times that you were with Mr. Jackson, was Jordan with Mr. Jackson? Yes. And when he's with Mr. Jackson, where did he sleep? With Mr. Jackson. Do you know somebody by the name of Joy Robson? Yes. Do you know somebody by the name of Wade Robson? Yes. And do you recall where it was that you met Joy Robson? Yes, I do. Where was that? That was at Neverland, one of the visits. Do you recall when it was that you met Wade Robson? One of the visits to Neverland. And do you recall approximately which visit it would have been or what month it would have been that you met these individuals? It could have been my third visit to Neverland. Did you meet them on more than one occasion? I met Wade on more than one occasion, yes. And how many times did you meet Joy Robson? One. One occasion? That I remember. There were occasions when Wade Robson was there that the mother was not there? Correct. Now, you've indicated to the jury on at least one occasion, perhaps two, that Brett Barnes was also at Neverland Valley Ranch. Yes, he was there too. And did you ever meet Brett Barnes' mother? No. So he was at the ranch by himself also? Oh, yes. Yes, he was. Did you ever meet a Mr. Robson, the father? No. No, not that I remember. Did you ever meet a Mr. Barnes at any point? Not that I remember, no. So no fathers in the picture? No. Now, prior to the time that you met Joe Robson for the first time, okay? Yes. On your visit to Neverland Valley Ranch, did you have a discussion with the defendant in this case, Mr. Jackson, with regard to some warnings that Mr. Jackson gave you about Joy Robson? Yes. What did Mr. Jackson tell you? Objection. Relevance. I think it's an admission of Mr. Jackson with regard to the relationship with the boys. Relevance and hearsay. I'm not sure what you're trying to introduce. I'm searching my memory for that. 
I don't know. Maybe you should approach with counsel. Thank you, Your Honor. Discussion held off the record at sidebar. Mrs. Chandler? Yes. Okay. Now, you had a conversation with Mr. Jackson, is that correct? Yes. Now, at the time, and please do not tell us what was said, but did you subsequently have a conversation with Miss Robson? Yes, I did. Wade's mother? Correct. Okay. Now, after that conversation, did you develop any concerns about some of the things that she had told you? I... I think you have to answer that, yes, or, no. We don't want to get into what she said. Yes. And with regard to that particular conversation, let me ask you this. Had you been invited by the defendant in this case, Mr. Jackson, to go on a tour with him, you and Jordan? Yes. And where were you invited by Mr. Jackson to go on a tour? I don't know where the tour was going. I guess a world tour somewhere in the summertime. Do you know where Miss Robson, Mrs. Robson, was from, what country? Australia. Do you know whether one of the stops on that tour was going to be Australia? I think it was, yes. Okay, let's talk a little bit about your trip to France. Yes. Do you recall approximately when that was? I think the middle of May. And how did you get there? We flew. And was it on a charter or a commercial airline? Commercial airline. And you say, we, so could you tell us who it was that you went with? My daughter, my son and Michael. And when you got to France, where in France did you stay? Monaco. And how long were you in Monaco? Approximately four days. And during the time that you were there, where did your son Jordan sleep? In Michael Jackson's bedroom. Now, did you ever go into that bedroom? Yes. And were they in bed together on occasion? On occasion, yes. Now, during the time that you were in Monaco, did you do any shopping? Yes. And how was it that you, well, let me put it this way, who went shopping with you? My daughter. You and Lily? Yes. And how many days did you do that? Oh, one day. And who was paying for the? Michael was. I'm sorry? Michael was. And how did he arrange that? I think I was given a credit card, his credit card. So you went shopping in Monaco on Michael Jackson's credit card, you and your daughter? Yes. Now, during this trip, did either your son or Mr. Jackson get ill? Yes, they both did. They had the flu? Yes. And were they in the room together the entire time? Yes. And when you went to France, did you go to any other country, any other places in France, other than Monte Carlo? We also went to Euro Disney outside of Paris. And do you recall how long you were there? A couple of days. Again, when you say, we, you're talking about Jordan and Lily, and was the defendant with you? Yes, he was. And you say you spent a couple of days. Where did Jordan sleep? With Michael Jackson. Now, do you have a brother? Yes, I do. What's your brother's name? I have two brothers. What are their names? Stephen Wong and Dale Wong. And was there a time when one of your brothers, where do they live? Let's go that way. One lives in Los Angeles. And the other lives back east in New Jersey. And was there a time when you went back east for a family wedding? Yes. Do you remember about what month that was? That was in September. And do you recall who it was who was getting married? Yes. Who was that? That was my brother Steve and his wife. And when you went back for the wedding, what city did you go to? We went to New York City. And when you went back there, who went with you? My son, my daughter, and myself. And when you first got there, where did you stay? We stayed in a hotel. Do you remember the name of the hotel? Yes, the Riga Royal Hotel. And do you know who made the arrangements for that hotel? Yes, I do. Who was that? Norma Stackos. And do you know who Mrs. Stackos is? Had you had prior dealings with Mrs. Stackos? Yes. On a number of occasions? Telephone conversations only. 
And who did she work for? She worked for Michael Jackson. And so she made the reservations for you at the hotel? Yes. When did you learn that Mr. Jackson was going to be with you in New York? Before or after you left? Before. Do you remember how many days before you learned that? Not really, no, I don't remember. On the day of the actual wedding, was Mr. Jackson there? No, he was not. When did he show up in relationship to the wedding? After the wedding. Do you remember how many days he showed up, how many days later? It could be two days later. Now, when Mr. Jackson got there, did you see him? That evening briefly. Okay. Now, had something happened during the time that you were in New York with your son Jordan before Mr. Jackson arrived which caused some problems in the family? Objection. Leading and vague. Overruled. You may answer. Yes. What was it? Jordan was spending too much time with Michael. I was getting upset. My brother was also with me, and he was saying. Objection. Hearsay. Don't tell us what he said, but. Okay. Could you describe his demeanor to us? Jordan was not with us. He didn't want to be with us. He was very, he was sullen. Now, during this time, Mr. Jackson was not there, correct? Correct. And to your knowledge, from your own personal knowledge, were Mr. Jackson and your son Jordan in communication with each other during this period of time? Yes. By what method? Telephone. And the frequency? Often. Often. Long conversations. And was your brother upset by the situation, too? Yes. Objection. Leading. Sustained. Move to strike. Stricken. Could you describe to the, describe your brother's reaction to this situation that was, that existed between Mr. Jackson and your son Jordan? Yes. My brother was happy for Jordan, but he didn't like that Jordy was just spending time with Michael and not with his family. Now, when Mr. Jackson showed up in New York, do you recall where he was staying? Yes, he was staying across the hallway from my room. And when Michael Jackson showed up, where did Jordan sleep? When Michael Jackson showed up, he slept in Michael's room. Now, when Mr. Jackson showed up the first night, was there an incident that occurred in your room? Objection. Leading. My room? Yeah. Yes, there was an incident. You have to wait till the judge rules. Overruled. You can answer. Okay, you can answer now. Yes, there was an incident. Who was involved in the incident? My daughter Lily. Okay. Michael and Jordan. And when you got back to your particular room, did you notice any damage in the room? Yes, I did. And what was damaged? I noticed there was damage in the morning. There were two lamps that were broken. Now, did you at some point talk to Mr. Jackson about what had happened the night before? Yes. And with regard to that conversation, did it involve Jordan? Yes, it did. And did it involve you? Yes, it did. And did it involve Mr. Jackson? Yes, it did. And the relationship between the two or three of you? Yes. Would you tell the jury what the conversation was about? Objection to the extent it calls for hearsay. Your Honor, this involves the defendant and it involves statements that he makes. But that's not the question you asked. I'll sustain the objection. Excuse me. Sustain the objection. All right. Let's do it this way. What did Mr. Jackson say about the situation? Why can't we be a family? Why are you objecting to Jordy staying with me? Why can't we be a family? Why don't you trust me? He was upset that I wanted my son back. That I, I didn't like the situation. It was getting out of hand. Now, you've told the ladies and gentlemen of the jury that Mr. Jackson had given you a bracelet at one point in time and that you had gone shopping with Mr. Jackson on his credit card in Monte Carlo. Were there any other occasions when Mr. Jackson gave you gifts? Yes. What else did he give you? He also gave me jewelry. And do you recall approximately when that was? I think it was approximately in June. And what kind of jewelry? A pair of earrings, a necklace, and a ring. 
And where were these items when you first saw them? The boxes were open on my bed in Santa Monica. At your house? Yes. Was Mr. Jackson staying at your house at that point in time? Not really. Not really. He was there, in and out. In and out. Okay. Any other gifts you ever received from Mr. Jackson? Yes, a gift certificate to a store. And the store? To a store. Yes, the store? Fred Siegel. Now, to your knowledge, was there ever an occasion where your son Jordan and the defendant in this case, Michael Jackson, were at your ex-husband's house, Evan Chandler? Yes, yes. And do you remember on how many occasions? I would say one or two occasions. And do you remember the length of the stays on those occasions that Jordan stayed there? A few days each time. So during this period of time you had custody of Jordan, correct? Correct. Now, you told us, I think, that there were two trips to Florida? Yes. Do you remember when the second trip was? After June, July, early July possibly. And do you recall how long you stayed there on that occasion? I would say two or three nights. And where did Jordan sleep on those occasions? With Michael. Did Lily go with you on that trip? Yes, she did. Had Jordan's behavior or attitude changed in any respect since the first time you described his change from Florida, the first trip? It was the same. Same. Father's Day is in June, okay? Yes. Do you remember a situation where you were with Jordan, your son, on Father's Day? Yes. In 1993? Yes. I'm sure you were with him on other occasions. Do you recall where you were in 1993 on Father's Day? Yes, I was in New York. And to your knowledge, in your presence, did Jordan call his father on Father's Day? Eventually he did, yes. And initially, did you have a conversation with him? Yes, I did. Did he want to call his father? No, he didn't. Objection. Hearsay. Move to strike. Sustained. Stricken. As a result of the conversation that you had with your son Jordan, did he eventually call his father? I think he did, yes. All right. At some point in time, did you receive a message of some sort from your ex-husband Evan about Mr. Jackson? Yes. And don't tell us what was said, okay? I just want to get the facts and the background to it. Where were you when you first heard the message? In Michael Jackson's car. In his limo. And was Mr. Jackson with you? Not when I got that call. Did the call come directly to you or did you access it in some other fashion? From another fashion. How was that? Answering machine. I dialed in. So you dialed the answering machine on whose answering machine? My answering machine at home. And there was a message on the machine from your ex-husband Evan, correct? Correct. Did you at some point later play that message for Mr. Jackson? I don't recall. Are you familiar with a person by the name of Anthony Pelicano? Yes, I am. And who is Anthony Pelicano, to your knowledge? A private investigator. And was Mr. Pelicano introduced to you by somebody? By Bert Fields and Michael Jackson. In relationship to this voice message that you received on your message machine at your house, do you recall how many days after that particular message, you received that message, that you were introduced to Mr. Pelicano and Mr. Fields by Mr. Jackson? It could be a week later. Objection. Move to strike. Misstates the evidence, and no foundation. Sustained. Stricken. Did you meet Anthony Pelicano through the defendant, Michael Jackson? Yes. Objection. Leading. Overruled. The answer is, yes. Next question. Did you meet Burt Fields through the defendant, Michael Jackson? Yes. Were you present during conversations with Mr. Pelicano and Mr. Fields and Mr. Jackson? Yes, I was. And this all occurred after the voicemail had been left on your message machine by your ex-husband Evan Chandler? Yes, sir. Now, did the defendant, Michael Jackson, tell you who Anthony Pelicano was? Yes, he did. What did he say about Mr. Pelicano? He can find out anything. 
He's really good at this. He's really good at investigating. If you're having a problem, he'll get to the bottom of it. And Mr. Fields, Bert Fields, is what, you know him by name. What occupation is he? He's an attorney. And he's an attorney who works for who? Or at this point in time, who did you know he was working for? He worked for Michael Jackson. Now, at some point in time, did you go to Mr. Pelicano's office to be interviewed by Mr. Pelicano? Yes. And did somebody go with you? Yes. Who was that? My ex-husband, Dave Schwartz. And was there anybody else present during this conversation? I don't remember. It could be Bert Fields also. Now, after that conversation, did you go somewhere else? Do you recall where you went? To Michael Jackson's home in Century City, apartment in Century City. And was Mr. Jackson there? He might have been. At that particular location, was your son Jordan Chandler there, can you tell us? Yes, he might have been there, too. Do you recall whether or not or do you recall an incident? Doesn't have to be on that particular occasion. But do you recall an occasion whether or not your son Jordan Chandler was ever interviewed by Anthony Pelicano? Yes, he was. Where did that interview take place? In the Century City apartment. Were you present? Yes. Were you present during the conversation? No. Where were you? Upstairs or in his, somewhere else. And do you recall how long that conversation took? Could have been 45 minutes. Now, after Mr. Pelicano and Mr. Fields were introduced to you by Michael Jackson, were you involved in some issues involving a change in custody of your son Jordan? Yes. And were you, were you presented with some papers to sign? Yes, I was. And those papers did what? Objection. Hearsay. Foundation. Relevance. Foundation. Sustained. The papers were presented to you by whom? By Pelicano. And was Mr. Fields present? I don't think at that time. Do you recall if the defendant, Michael Jackson, was present? No, he wasn't. At some point in time did you have a conversation with Michael Jackson about signing those papers? I don't recall talking to Michael about the papers. Do you recall giving a statement to an attorney, a deputy district attorney with the Los Angeles District Attorney's Office on September 3rd of 1993? Yes, I do. And it was Miss Lauren Weiss? Yes, it was. And you gave a rather lengthy statement to Miss Weiss? Yes, I did. Do you recall telling Miss Weiss that? Objection. Leading. Hearsay. Move to strike. It's foundational, or to refresh her recollection. If you want to refresh her recollection with something, you can approach her and show the item. All right. Counsel. Page 95, lines 15 to 19. Objection. Foundation, Your Honor. You have to ask her if it will help refresh her recollection, or it might. Can I show it to her first? That's the way counsel's been doing it. No, I haven't at all. Actually, he's been asking them if it would refresh their recollection if he showed them something. All right. Do you recall that conversation? Yes, I do. And? And it occurred at a point in time when things were a lot fresher in your mind than they are now? Yes. Would it help, perhaps, if you looked at the statement, that it might help refresh your recollection? Yes. May I approach the witness, Your Honor? Yes. Just read it to yourself. Start here and write down to here. How's that, counsel? I'm having her read lines 11 to line 25. I'm going to object to that. That's improper refreshing of recollection and it's hearsay, foundational, to have her just read it. That's all I'm asking her to do. I'm just trying to help you try to find out where it is. All right, just let her look at it. Counsel knows you can refresh a person's recollection with anything. Your Honor, I thought she was reading it out loud. That was my mistake. I withdraw the objection. That would have been improper. We've been down that road before. All right, I'm sorry. Did we, where are we? Laughter. I know where we are. Is it break time yet? No. Laughter. I'm sorry, judge. 
You're going to have to suffer for six more minutes and you're not getting out of here a minute early. Payback is you know what. All right. Mrs. Chandler, with regard to whether or not the defendant was present, did that refresh your recollection? Yes, it does. And do you recall whether the defendant was present? He was present. And does it refresh? Did the defendant, Michael Jackson, make statements to you with regard to the particular documents that you were being asked to sign? Yes, he did. And do you recall what he told you? He was frantic. He was begging me to, come over and sign this so there won't be any lawsuits or anything. Just sign it, sign it. And, in effect, what you signed did what to you personally? Objection. Hearsay. Foundation. Let me go back, judge. I think I can correct this. I am assuming you read the document before you signed it? Briefly. And you understood what it meant when you were signing it? Not really. Okay. You understood. Well, let me ask you this. Did you understand? If you didn't understand all of it, you understood some of it, correct? Yes, I did. Did you understand a part of it that had to do with who was going to have custody for the children temporarily? Exactly, yes. Objection. Leading. Overruled. I'm sorry? Yes. And it wasn't going to be you anymore? Exactly. Did you sign that paper? I did. Mrs. Chandler, I neglected to ask you about one other incident that occurred at Neverland Ranch, okay? Yes. So pardon me if we can go back in time from where we are presently. And then we're almost done, okay? Okay. Do you recall whether there was ever any occasion where your brother and your sister-in-law ever visited Neverland Valley Ranch? Yes, I do recall. Do you know approximately when it was that they visited Neverland Valley Ranch? Approximately May. And do you know how long they were there? For the day. Just came up for the day? Yes, for the day. And do you recall, were you with them while they were at the ranch? Yes, I was. Was Jordan at the ranch? Yes, he was. Where was Jordan? With Michael. Now, do you remember about what time it was when you left that day, you personally? Before 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. P. M. P. M. Now, do you recall seeing Mr. Jackson and Jordan before you left? Yes. And where did you see them? They were in Michael Jackson's bedroom. And do you recall, did you go into the bedroom? Yes. Did you go in there with your brother and sister-in-law? Yes, we did. And when you went into the bedroom, where was Mr. Jackson? In the bedroom with Jordan. Do you recall where? Could be on the bed. You don't remember specifically? Not specifically. Okay. And Jordan, do you recall where he was? On the bed, too. Now, at some point in time, Mrs. Chandler, your son Jordan Chandler was involved in a lawsuit, Chandler vs. Jackson, a civil lawsuit. Do you recall that? Yes, I do. And were you a participant in that lawsuit as a representative of your son? Yes, I was. And who was the lawyer who represented your son during the majority of that litigation? Larry Feldman. And to your knowledge, was a lawsuit filed on behalf of your son against the defendant, Michael Jackson? Yes. And did you assist or help Mr. Feldman in the preparation of that lawsuit? Yes. And did you support your son during that lawsuit? I did. Now, as a result of the lawsuit, did your son, and please, don't tell us the amount, please. Did your son receive monetary compensation from Mr. Jackson? Yes, he did. Now, also as a result of that lawsuit, did you receive some monetary compensation? Yes, I did. Did you ever ask to be compensated in any way as a result of what had happened? No. Objection. Foundation. And hearsay. All right. Overruled. You did not? No. And where did the idea for you receiving compensation come from, to your knowledge? Objection. To the extent it calls for hearsay. Sustained. As a result of this lawsuit, did you receive money? Yes, I did. Did you have to sign something in exchange for that money? 
Yes, I did. And what did you sign? A disclosure agreement. And what does that mean? Confidentiality agreement. All right, let's take our break.